Elebron has one of the most absolutely crazy stat lines for a horse character in the entire game, rocking a passive 80 melee attack with Frenzy active that only goes up from there when she starts to kick off some of her buffs. Today's Slade is taking her and a very interesting build here, he's already right on top of the Chaos Dwarfs with this Vanguard of Doomfire Warlocks and Harpies. Super interesting choice in this matchup. The rest of the build here is going to be some more mobility. He's got uh, Hellebron on horseback, Sorceress of Fire, and some Cold One Knights quickly moving in. And for the Chaos Dwarfs, we've got Zatan up in the sky. He's quite expensive, but pretty good. Demon Smith Sorcerer, uh, some Chaos Dwarf Infantry, some Blunderbusses here, Kadai Fireborn and some Hobgoblin Archers and Hobgoblin uh, Cutthroats as well. Let's get things rolling. Yeah, this is going to be a super interesting matchup. I would imagine the Kadai just absolutely smash here, but uh, at least the Doomfire Warlocks are able to get on some of the Hobgoblin Archers and some of these other units, be able to squish them pretty easily. The Kadai also duking it out with uh, Doomfire Warlocks. Not an engagement I ever saw. I thought I'd... Anyway, English is hard. Thought I'd see, <laughs> but there's the Soul Stealer as well from the uh, the lads here, the Slanesh's Harvesters. Yeah, they're doing some pretty good damage. The initial uh, Doomfire Warlock that made contact is already dead, but as soon as the Doomfire War, the Slanesh's Harvesters start taking the hits from the Kadai Fireborn, they also just get melted super quickly. But uh, likewise, Hobgoblin's also getting melted pretty quickly, and Hellebron, of course, moving in to snipe Zatan, and he does not want to be here at all. Definitely wants to run the heck away. I think she already popped one round of buffs, but yeah, rocking like a cool thousand weapon strength, 80 melee attack, you know, just absolutely insane in, start of, in terms of offensive stats here. Uh, Zatan on the Lamasu is a super interesting choice as well, but uh, he's got his damage resistance currently active. It's the only thing that's kept him from dying so far, but he's basically going to die right now. Yeah, you can see those hits just absolutely savaging huge hits just savaging Jatan, and he is uh, very quickly going to be smashed by Hellebron. That puts a dent back of the balance of power, which was working against the Dark Elves slightly. A Lord of Fire is definitely an aggressive choice against <laughs> Chaos Dwarfs. I kind of don't hate it, to be honest, uh, considering Kindle Flame exists. Still not going to do as much damage as against other factions, but a brutal fate of Buna there on those Cold One Knights going to do some pretty good damage. They still land their rear charge on those Chaos to Wolf Warriors. The armor piercing, actually, of those two Old One Knights is going to be pretty important as they continue fighting. But let's see here. Prone Hellebron with uh, Murderous Mastery and uh, Blood Frenzy. Frenzy active. Yeah, 550 weapon strength, 100 charge bonus, almost 100 melee attack. Again, just passively with the extra 20 bonus versus infantry to applicable targets. None of which are these currently. The Kadai and the uh, Bull Centaurs all obviously count as large. <laughs> on Hellebron, nonetheless. Ooh, getting some supporting Doom Bolts there. Just taking some hits. I mean, her melee defense 50 is good, but only, only what, 15 armor? Yeah, a little bit of physical resistance. Definitely helps somewhat, but she's definitely quite squishy. Just insane offensive potential, and that has definitely been realized here. Uh, we're going to see this little Soul Blight. Yep, this is probably a bound Soul Blight from one of the remaining doom fires if there are any looks like there are a few over here that's going to lessen the armor and the weapon strength significantly of all units in that aoe as these uh cold one knights trying to pull away from those chaos to warp warriors not stay in combat for too long going with the all mobility for slade was quite risky i must say um you know mobility all mobility builds tend not to have a lot of meat on them but really just depends another big timing push though from uh Throwing Hellebron here as she tries to finish the Demon Smith Sorcerer. Unfortunately, it looks like she's getting a little bit blocked out in terms of her attack animations, and she hasn't actually been able to like get hits uh, on the Demon Smith Sorcerer here. And like even still, there gets one attack animation. But I think the whole time she had that heroic killing blow up active, she fortunately was not getting any hits. But uh, pretty quickly going to turn into a victory for Slade. I mean, it's not it's going to be a terribly long battle, but already the Chaos Dwarf. Uh, units facing some pretty significant leadership issues, and that'll be it. So, yeah, relatively quick one today, but we'll finish up with some post-analysis. Sometimes the games do go that way, especially when you go for kind of an all-in vanguard strategy, which I have to say, the Doomfire Warlocks did a little bit better than I was uh, expecting. The one that had to fight the Kadai just died horribly, but it was definitely, uh, definitely a thing. And Hellebron, man, 3,500 gold value, 12,000 damage dealt. Took some pretty significant damage, but her offensive stats are just so insane. 
on horseback. So one of the probably one of the stronger horse characters in the game in terms of offensive output. Again, defensively, super squishy, can die to a lot of things. And I'm not sure if Dag here had Spirit Leech, but definitely should have been Spirit Leeching the Crone if he didn't have it. Needs to have it. Uh, Zatan is nice to see sometimes. He's a cool, fun kind of style pick, but he doesn't really do a lot for you, unfortunately. Other units won't do. But uh, yeah, the one Kadai got almost 3,000 damage value, just killing Doomfire Warlocks. Uh, uh, 1,200 kills, 99... Or sorry, 99 kills, 1,200 damage dealt. Yeah, probably got most little Chevrons just straight up through the battle, which is incredible. Absolutely incredible. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the Doomfire Warlocks being able to get in and just shut down all the Hobgoblin units very quickly, quickly was definitely part of it. Uh, the Harpies also doing a little bit. But, uh, yeah, Halibron, I mean, if we think about other horse characters, I can't really think of... Maybe you guys will have to let me know in the comments below. Anyone that compares to her in terms of offensive potential, right? Um, I mean, you've just got so much going on here. Her base abilities, just with nothing. Um, you know, you get this Frenzy, obviously, and Murderous Mastery, both of which are nice offensive power boosts. Gaze of Cain, obviously, is the one, one that she's known for. It's an AoE support ability that gives massive weapon strength, melee attack, leadership, and gives rampage, which, you know, you gotta be sure when you're using it that you pop everything else you want to use first. But then I didn't really highlight it too much, but this Cursed Blade was also active in that battle. It was doing a little bit of AoE damage to different targets that were losing. It's kind of finicky. It doesn't always work great, but if you can get good sort of offensive timing pushes where your units are winning around Helebron, you can, often can get some pretty decent damage. It is a reasonably expensive item, though. Uh, the Spell Resistance is one that, like I mentioned, she, the opponent should have probably been Spirit Leeching her. That's one you might want to pick up to help protect against that. Although, again, pretty expensive item. Does give some uh, spell resistance in an AoE. It doesn't do a lot, as nearly as much for multi-model units as it does for her herself. But uh, regardless, uh, definitely the Witch Brew for a self buff is another nice one. Again, gives Rampage, but another huge uh, weapon strength boost, especially if you pair it with Heroic Killing Blow. That's plus 100% weapon strength, which already, because of the Frenzy, is going to be above 500, so pretty easy to get her like a thousand plus weapon strength you add in the blood frenzy which definitely want to take this just passively charges up extra weapon strength for her over time and gives a bigger refresh which when combined with a bigger refresh from murderous mastery will pretty much mean that she's uh likely to maintain her vigor as long as she's alive like her vigor will probably last longer than her hp in fact it will definitely last longer than her hp uh because that's the one downside less than 5,000 hp 50 melee defense 15 armor uh, yeah, 20% physical resistance is nice, again, especially if you bring in that extra spell resistance, but they're looking at like 2,000 uh, potentially or more for a uh, horse character that's relatively squishy. <laughs> it's a huge risk, but the reward is incredible. So be sure to consider Hellebron next time you're going uh, for the Dark Elves. Yeah, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.